And we've got over 300 tubas back here. Tuba players, come on. Happy holidays, everyone. All right, thanks so much for joining us. On behalf of the Kennedy Center and the Millennium Stage, I want to say thanks for coming tonight. As far as we're concerned, the holiday season does not begin until we hold this event. It's our 22nd year of presenting Tuba Christmas here at the Kennedy Center, and I won't waste any more time. I'm gonna turn it over to your master of ceremonies this evening. We love having him here every year to run this show. He is retired principal tubist for the National Symphony Orchestra. Please welcome David Bergunier. Thanks, Matt. It's uh, once again an honor to, to, be, uh, to be here and do this concert. There's, I can't believe there's 300 and 320 of us, or 300 and over 300. It's in, it, 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 where did these people come from? It's just fantastic. It's just fantastic. This is the really the event that gets my Christmas season started. This is the 39th Tuba Christmas. And you know, I love this season of the year, and you know, whether it's the inspiration to get out of there and the crowds, just to find that right present, or to uh, help remind me of the real meaning of Christmas. But I think you're gonna love these. Uh, if you haven't heard these before, they, they, this is re it's a really a wonderful, uh, wonderful mellow sound. So once again, we are honored to have as our guest conductor the retired commander of the uh, United States Army Band, Brian Shelbourne. This is his 21st appearance with us, and we are uh, pleased that he comes all the way from Macon, Georgia, to conduct us. <laughs> Welcome, Colonel Brian Shelbourne. No, that's not my mother. <laughs> I'm so pleased to be here, and I'm grateful for the chance to do this again. I love it as Dave does. We're going to begin the program with O oh, Come All You Faithful. And some of you are veterans who know that if you wish to do it, you can sing along on the second time through on most of these. A few of them we'll just do once, and we'll let you know up front about that. Yeah. Thank I'll you for coming. I'll try to get you started on some of these. Once through with the tubas, and then we're going to see if we can't do some singing. And no limp syncing, by the way. No lip syncing out there. And for this, for the first time, we actually, I think, in s the, so those of you who have programs, I think the words are even in there, so we don't want to have any excuses. And I, I must say this, and I'm not just 
just making this up. I think this is the best choir we've had up here so far. You know, but I think we can do even, even better than that, you know? We're gonna try to improve it just a little bit because, you know, Washington, D.C., we're known as the choral capital of the world. We have five major symphonic choruses here and many wonderful uh, church choirs. And I sing with an organization called the Choral Arts Society of Washington. And you know, every rehearsal of, of every chorus starts with a little warm up. So maybe we're just not quite totally warmed up, although you sound wonderful. So we have an easy warm up. It's got real easy words to it. It's fa la 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 la, la la la, La. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Isn't that a great sound? You know, we have in the back here the wonderful sousaphones and those tubas, they play that last note. Let's hear that last note. Just those low, the sousaphones and the big tubas back there, just that last note. Ah. Music to my ears. Do you know that there are only two instruments named for people that invented them. One is the saxophone, named for its uh, inventor, Adolf Sax, and the sousaphone, which was invented for the wonderful Sousa Band, led by the March King, John Philip Sousa. He was born right here in Washington, D.C., and he wrote many, many marches, and that's why he was called the March King. But the most famous one, of course, is our National March Stars and Stripes Forever. Our next carol, the tubas and sousaphones uh, get the melody. It's about time. So this is God rest ye merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. And I love this message because here we are in Washington and we put on our parachutes to go over the fiscal cliff. <laughs> Let nothing you dismay. That's the message of this carol. Thank you.
did you know that tubas, if any, if any of you brought your cameras, you might want to get, get them out for this. Did you know that tubas can take a bow? And I think we're going to try that at this point. Now, we have many people around in Washington, D.C. who do instrument repair. So we're very careful on these bows, but we, we helping the small business by doing this, because we sometimes have some clashes back there. But tubas, let's show them how we take a bow. All right. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> the uh, next carol we have comes from England in the 1500s, and this really sets the scene for uh, snowy Christmas night, and this is the first Noel the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. It uh, seems that a lot of our best-known carols come from Europe, but uh, this next one was written by an American minister, Philip Brook, who went to the Middle East as a tourist and was standing on the hillside at night overlooking Bethlehem and was so moved that he wrote, wrote this beautiful carol, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie.
I'm trying to help you up here. You know, these are written for euphoniums and tubers, so sometimes they're not real vocal friendly. But I appreciate that you sound wonderful. You sound wonderful here. I sometimes come across uh, someone who doesn't know what tuba Christmas is, and uh, it's, it's actually it's kind of hard to explain. Um, they say, what does it sound like? And, and the first word that comes to mind is uh, a mellow, mellow, mellow Christmas carols. So I guess you're wondering how this all got started. I know some of you know the story, but uh, back in 1974, our, uh, Harvey, our founder, Harvey Phillips, got the idea that he would like to honor his tuba teacher, William Bell, who had died in 1971. Uh, Mr. Bell was not only a renowned and respected teacher, but he had played in the NBC Symphony, the New York Philharmonic, and in John Philip Sousa's band. Since Mr. Bell had been born on Christmas Day in 1902, what better way to honor him than with arrangements of Christmas carols? Well, Harvey had this wonderful idea, and he had lots of tuba players who were willing to come along, and he decided, well, we sh he lived in New York, he decided this should be played on the ice rink at Rockefeller Center. Well, of course, Rockefeller Center didn't really know what he was talking about and didn't take to the idea very much. They, did, they just said, well, it sounds too unusual. I mean, who ever heard of tubas playing Christmas carols? So he called a couple of his good friends, uh, Leopold Stokowski, Leonard Bernstein, a few others, and they contacted Rockefeller Center. And don't you know they played on the ice rink at Rockefeller Center? Well, it was about Thanksgiving, and Harvey then realized he was a great idea man, but then he realized we don't have any music. What are we going to do? So he contacted Alec Wilder, famous uh, composer and a good friend of his, and he arranged these wonderful carols. There are, this year, over 250 tuba Christmases around the world. And I looked, there, there are three of them in Hawaii this year, five or six in Alaska. But in any case, it's become a worldwide event over these 39 years. Sadly, Harvey passed away in October 2010. And we would like to honor him with this next piece. It's called Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. Harvey Phillips did more for the tuba. You know, who ever heard of the tuba? as a solo instrument. And he would get composers by the neck and make them write pieces for the tuba. He would talk them into it. He was a wonderful salesman. And there are now hundreds of solo pieces written for the tuba, so we have Harvey to thank for that. Lo, how a rose air blooming.
And we are honored uh, today to, to have uh, Harvey's wife, Carol, and his son, Tom, came with us. They make a couple of trips. They came all the way from Bloomington, Indiana. Tom's up there somewhere. It's Tom Phillips. <laughs> Carol's out there somewhere. <laughs> and Harvey, in, uh, in his last years, decided that he would uh, uh, write a book. And he has written a book. Uh, it just came out recently. It's a wonderful book about his life. Not only about his life, though, but all of the hints uh, of uh, performing, uh, not just tubas, but uh, brass instruments. And it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful book. And you can guess what the name of it is. The name of it is Mr. Tuba. One of the wonderful things about this uh, group up here is we have every possible mix of performers up here, from, from children through service bands, amateurs, professionals, and so on. But we always try to foster young players to start this instrument, because we're very proud of our instrument, and we want kids to take up uh, the tuba or the euphonium. So we always ask the youngest and the oldest to be recognized. And the youngest is Marco Stein. He's from Vienna, Virginia, and he is eight years old. Marco, hold up your instrument. Instrument, there he is. <laughs> and for the most mature, Thank heavens he came, because when we're doing rehearsal, I always say, anyone here 90 years old, nobody. 80 years old, nobody. And then I start down, start down. I got to 73, and at one point today, I was the oldest one here. <laughs> and then came along Alan Weil, who is Thank heavens, here, he's 76 years old. So he's our senior man today. Where is he? Back there with us, back there with the sousaphone. Well, at this point, I, just, I do like to mention that please support music in your public schools. Harvey and I both got a start in the, practically the same way. I volunteered in the seventh grade, and they came around and asked who would like to play the school's sousaphone. And I didn't even hear sousaphone. I heard schools, because my family couldn't afford an instrument. I raised my hand, and here I am. And the same thing happened, practically the same thing happened with Harvey. He started out on the sousaphone in the seventh grade, and, and look what, uh, look what uh, he accomplished. I auditioned for Peabody, conservatory in Baltimore on a B-flat sousaphone. So if you really s set your mind to it, you can do anything. So that's my sermon for the day. <laughs> Support music in your public schools. Our next song is, the next carol is, it's actually very easy to sing. It's called Angels We Have Heard on High.
Well, can I, can I tag on to what you said earlier with schools? I want you to know how many schools are represented up here, because it's quite a list. <clears throat> and if you would stand, when I mention your school, who's here from Chesterbrook Elementary School? I know you're there. George, what outstanding. George Washington Middle School. <laughs> Benton Middle School. <laughs> Parkview High School. <laughs> Westfield High School. Chantilly, is it? Okay. Stonewall Jackson uh, in Manassas. High school or middle school? Not sure. George Mason High School. Henderson Middle School. Yeah, Washington, don't be shy. Washington Episcopal Elementary and Middle School. Okay. Uh, Handley High School, I think that's Winchester. <laughs> Go. Anybody from Fauquier County Schools, please stand. Yes. Got some of you twice. I Fauquier think. County Schools have 40, 47, because their teacher reminded me she's playing back there, too. <laughs> and the uh, band director who's mirroring uh, the conducting back here so that the people in the deep part of the pit area can also see a beat uh, is Andrew Paul, right? And from Fauquier County. Thank you so very yes, much. We thank him. Pretty phenomenal. Thank you. He gets the hero award for the night because um, he would much rather be playing and he brought his euphonium, but I asked him to do some conducting tonight. So next year, you can play the euphonium. <laughs> well, at this time, we'd uh, like to recognize all of our wonderful uh, service band people up here. Uh, and I'm just going to call out the different uh, uh, services that are uh, represented. We have the uh, Air Force Band. The, the Naval Academy Band. The Quantico Marine Corps Band. And the United States Army Band. And the Marine Band, I apologize. And the Marine Band, my God. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. I need help up here, I do. Thank you. So this, this next carol, we uh, honor those uh, who serve us in, in harm's way. Um, and this, these are the people, that, these are first responders. These are the people who uh, helped out in the uh, Sandy uh, hurricane, and uh, we like to honor them with uh, Silent Night, Holy Night. And of course, the last words are, sleep in heavenly peace. And isn't that uh, what we all hope for, is peace? And we're going to play this twice. Twice. Play it twice, and hopefully you'll uh, sing along the second time.
now we're going to rest our voices a bit. And uh, if you hadn't noticed already, all of these instruments up here have a part called the bell. That's where the sound comes out. So what better carol than the carol of the bells? This is a uh, this is based on a, a Ukrainian folk song, and the first time it came to this country was Carnegie Hall in the 1920s. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, uh, carol, the Carol of the Bells. Now we're going to lighten things up a little bit. Uh, you know, I never stopped believing in Santa Claus. We didn't have a fireplace at, at my house. Santa Claus came across a roof on the, our second floor apartment, and he always took those, that milk and cookies that I left. I, I really never stopped believing. But you know, did you ever think, I wonder what is on Santa Claus' list? Well, we're going to help you figure that one out. So we have here the retired tuba section leader and sergeant major of the United States Army Band, and he is going to tell you a little bit about what Santa Claus wants for Christmas. Please welcome Jack Tilbury. Thanks, Dave. Santa goes all over the world bringing toys to good girls and boys and who would have ever thought that uh, you know Santa might have his own special wish for what he might want for Christmas we always think about what we want for Christmas but what would Santa want let's do this Well, Santa wants a tuba for Christmas. He knows playing tuba is fun. Santa wants a tuba for Christmas, but who's gonna give him one? Santa wants a tuba for Christmas, a bright, shiny tuba to play. Santa wants a tuba for Christmas, so please won't you send one his way. Santa knows the tuba blows the jolliest sound you'll hear. What he's hoping to see waiting under his tree is a tuba to toot when he's finished his route. Well, Santa wants a tuba for Christmas. He never got a present before. 
Santa wants a tube before Christmas. It's all that he ever asked for. It's all that he ever asked for. Well, can you imagine Santa? He goes out, he brings all of these presents to these kids all over the world. And what would happen if one year he finally comes home and there under the Christmas tree is a present for him? And it's not just any present, it's a big, bright, shiny tuba with a big red bow on it. Well, Santa would pick it up and start playing it. And he'd sound a lot like Brian Sands from the Air Force Band. <laughs> Santa got a two before Christmas. He never got a present before. Santa got a two before Christmas. It's all that he ever asked for. It's all that he ever asked for. Well, Santa got a tuba in his stocking this year. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Jack. Well, here's another one of my favorite parts of the program. And I, I went out and I recruited a few children from the audience. And I call them our jingle bellers. So let's see what kind of courage we have here. With the, uh, those kids that I talked to, you want to come up front here? I think there was uh, eight or 10 of them. Don't be shy. Come up. Come on. Here we go. There we go. You want to come over here? I'm over here going to stand like a choir. All right. All right. And I think we know the words to Jingle Bells. If we don't, we're going to make them up here. Anybody else? Here we come. One more. Come. Yes. OK. Very good. Yes. OK, that's good. I recruited. I always recruit for this because one year I didn't. And we had about 50 kids try to get up here. It didn't quite. Uh, excellent. OK, you guys ready? OK. You'll know when to start, right away. <laughs> Excellent. All right, guys. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> you all have to come back next year, and we have to really the best singing, best singing from everyone, adults and children this year. This is the best ever. 
Okay, you know, we've got one or two more uh, carols here. Now we're going to do uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And, you know, this always amazes me how, uh, how just wonderful this sounds. We've only had one hour rehearsal, and this is come one, come all. We come from all over this whole area, and we rehearse from four to five, and you can hear the results. I, just, I think it's just wonderful what we can do. So, this is Hark the Herald, Angels Sing. Sounds wonderful, sounds wonderful. Well, we've had a great time up here, so uh, we'd like to uh, again wish you a Merry Christmas and a Merry Tuba Christmas and the happiest of holidays. So I'd like uh, to thank once again the service band folks that came and all the people, all the wonderful schools, all the wonderful schools that came as a group. And I would like to thank the choir up here. You were the best yet, best yet. <laughs> so on behalf of the Kennedy Center, this is a wonderful crowd back there. I see you way back almost to the concert hall. Thank you so much for coming. This has been a, just a thrill for us to see what such a wonderful crowd back there. Our last carol is Joy to the World. Oh, and thanks to the Colonel. Thanks to the Colonel for coming all the way from Macon. <laughs> My Ooh. pleasure. That was a close call. Thank you.
23 in our book, 23. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Have a wonderful holiday. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much, all who are playing.